Is the Sony a7S III good enough, or is it worth forking down a lot of extra cash for the A1 that Sony just announced? Let's chat. When the a7S III was released, we couldn't believe it. The market could not believe it. A full frame camera that's shooting 4K 120 internal in 10 bit along with other features was just unbelievable. It had been rumored for so long and they finally dropped it and I personally couldn't believe it when it came out. So I picked one up immediately thinking that there was no way Sony would drop another camera of similar specs anytime soon. A small part of me thought that they might drop an 8K video camera to compete with Canon's R5, and that brings us to today with the Sony A1. Even though on paper, technically the A1 has better specs than the A7S III, with a few caveats that I'll get to later, is it worth twice as much as the A7S III? A very expensive camera already coming in at $3,500, if you don't know by now, the A1 costs about $7,000. That right there is the question that I'm going to be answering today. Is the A1 worth spending twice as much as the A7S III, or should you just pick up an A7S III? You could even get two of them, and I realized I just said A7S III, I meant A7S III. Could you get two A7S III's and be just as happy, or buy an A7S III and another camera to fill the needs that the A1 has? These are just my first impressions. I haven't gotten my hands on the A1 yet. I do own the A7S III, and that's what I'm shooting on right now. But this morning, I just saw the announcement from Sony with the A1, so I'm going to be comparing my experiences using the A7S III so far with the specs that Sony is telling us will be in the A1. So the main differences that the A1 has over the A7S III so far, from my understanding, is that it shoots 50 megapixel photos up to 30 frames per second in photo mode, and then it shoots 8K video up to 30 FPS video mode. Will it overheat? Time will tell, hopefully not. Hopefully it doesn't overheat like Canon's R5 did. Overall, I think this is kind of an interesting move on Sony's end because they're literally mashing the best of each category in the photo and video side and smushing them into one very, very expensive mirrorless camera. They're basically taking an A7S III and a Sony A7R IV, mashing them together, or an A9, mashing them together and giving us one very expensive camera that can do both those things. For me, I couldn't even buy the A1 because I can't believe it, but Sony did not put a flip out screen on that camera. I kind of kid, I would probably still buy it even without the flippy screen. And I kind of get why they didn't do it. It's not really meant to be a vlogging camera. A $7,000 vlogging camera would be pretty excessive. However, I've seen it done on like a red Komodo or on the same price range, but I digress. The flippy screen thing isn't that big of a deal. This camera is obviously appealing to the cinematographer that is going to be shooting some high quality 8K stuff. The flip out screen doesn't really matter. But anyway, here are some combinations that you could use to achieve similar quality content on the photo and video side than the A1. So let's give ourselves a budget of $7,000, the price of just the body of the A1. We want 50 megapixel photos or similar, and no matter what, we're not gonna be able to shoot 8K video, but I don't think I would even ever shoot 8K video, yet 4K and 10-bit 422 is plenty for me, so we're not really gonna discuss that. I think 8K is only for a very select group of people. If that's you, just get the A1, but if it's not, like 90% of us, here are some options. Pick up a Sony A7S III body, $3,500. Go on Sony's website, wherever you buy your cameras, and pick up a Sony A7R Mark III or Mark IV for anywhere between $2,000 and $2,500. You are still under $6,000, $1,000 less than the A1, and now you have two bodies to get two angles and not have to constantly switch lenses on one camera. You are shooting the same video minus the 8K on the A7S III and the same quality photos, kind of, as the A1. Personally, I would rather have two bodies, one for video and one for photo. So when I'm out running and gutting, shooting client projects, shooting videos for YouTube, I can have my video setup rigged out. And then when I need a photo, I can just bust out my photo camera with all the settings configured with the right lens that I wanna be shooting for photography, might be different than video. I wanna be able to have two separate cameras that specialize in what they do best. So for me, before investing $7,000 in the A1, I'm probably gonna do that setup. A7S III, which I already have, and then pick up an A7R Mark III or Mark IV, which will specialize in photography. Now, 
say you are more of a cinematographer, you're someone that's more interested in Sony's FX6 because of the cinema features it gives you over the a7S III like XLR inputs, built-in ND filters, but you don't wanna drop $6,500 on that body and you can't really invest in the a7S III because it doesn't have the cinema features you need. Lo and behold, the Sony FS700. I love this camera, it's 10 years old. When it came out, it was $10,000. Now you can pick one up on eBay for like $1,000. And body only, it's kind of worthless. It only shoots up to 1080p, but paired with this guy, the Ninja Shogun Inferno, I believe, it will do 4K RAW in 12-bit video. It will do 4K 120 slow motion and 2K in 240 frames slow-mo. This right here is a setup not a whole lot of people know about unless you've been around for a while and I am still rocking it as my B cam to the A7S III here in 2021. This whole setup right here costs less than $3,000 less than half of just the body for the FS uh, for the FX6. I'm getting too stoked over here. So this right here might be a great setup to consider. I will do a more deep dive video on this camera at some point. It's been on my list for a while, but not today. So who do I think the Sony A1 is going to be for? Well, first of all, someone who wants to shoot 8K video in a mirrorless body. There's just no other options on the market from Sony right now. You're either going with the Canon R5, which we all know overheats, or you might be looking at dropping seven grand on the new A1. You might also be a hardcore hybrid shooter where you need the best video specs and the best photo specs smecks in the smallest package possible. Like I mentioned earlier, I'd rather have two bodies, but if you travel a ton and you need a really small setup and you have to have those in one, then the A1 is gonna be great for you. I am in no rush to pre-order or buy this camera. I'd love to test one out. Hey Sony, if you wanna send one, that'd be rad but I'm not buying one for a long time. I'm not super excited about it just because it's not very applicable to my style of shooting. Like I just said, there's a ton of other options that make me much more excited and keep more money in my bank account. If you enjoyed this video, don't be afraid to go and hit that like button, the subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Let's chat about this new camera. If you have any questions about the Sony a7S III or the Sony FS700 I showed you earlier, leave those comments down there. And until next time, keep creating, keep enjoying the process. I will see you in the next video. Peace.